Hello and welcome to this Game Pit Pit Stop for Futuropia, designed by Freedom and Freezer and published by Stronghold Games. In Futuropia, the players are attempting to build their own spectacular condominium and generate food and energy and run it with robots so that the people living in there are completely self-sustaining and are able to live a life of leisure. Now the players are going to do this by taking one of five actions on their turn. And when they take one of those actions, they simply flip the tail the tile face down. And when they've taken all five, these will flip back over. Or you can choose to flip them at the end of your turn before you've used all five by paying some basic resources. So let's look at what these actions are. The first one we're going to look at here is that you can take robots. Now, robots can work for you in these generators underneath your condo. The generators are food generators or energy generators. And robots can go in spaces rather than humans, allowing them to come back up and live in peace in the condominium, which is the end goal and will score you many off your points. In this case, we can take one to three robots. We're only going to take two. You're going to see why in a sec. And they can take the place of humans in generators as long as there's no meeple symbol in the generator, as we'll see in a sec. So we'll pop those robots in there. This end of this action, however, we're going to have to pay the energy costs of our entire complex. Now, each robot is going to cost one energy, and also condo bits that you've added to it may cost you energy, and this costs one. We only start with three, so that's going to cost us all three. Now, if we couldn't have paid that energy, we do have the option of taking a loan, but loans are going to cost us every time we want to flip back over our action tiles, and we're going to have to pay them back. So having that stuff was a better idea, but we'll leave that there to remind us of the rules, and this tile will flip over. For my next action, I might choose to get an extra generator into here. In this case, I'm taking a food generator. Now, you'll always have a choice of two different types of generators for each of the two different types. These go up through lots of different ones, and they'll come into the market gradually, as we'll see. In this case, we're going to choose to buy the basic one. Now, when you buy a basic one, this price chart doesn't change at all. You simply take it and you add it to your condo. And to make life easy, I'm going to slide that along because that makes your bookkeeping slightly easier when you're checking how much space you've got and which generators you can run. And we'll move these guys down here. Now, I had to pay the cost of this generator, and this generator costs four money with nothing changing here according to the market, so I'll just put the four money back into the bank. At the end of this action, I'm then going to generate food. And you look to your food generators, you see which ones are powered and how much food they generate. That robot's get me one, this one's get me two, and these two guys are getting me four. So that's seven food that will come back into my stocks, and I'd flip this face down. But I'm going to take a second now to discuss how this market actually works. Now, as you saw, I took from the cheap side, so that doesn't change the market at this stage because it's already down the bottom. If I choose to take the more expensive one, and generally they're more efficient, for one robot or person here, I generate three food, I would move this price marker up and take that. If someone else again took from the more expensive side, they're now paying one extra money, which make this cost six instead of five, that price marker would move up. And now that this side is empty, we then move in the next value up generator. Now the base cost is six, but it's got modifier plus two. So anyone buying from this side is now going to pay eight. Now, if instead the player chose to take from the cheap side, this price has been getting less expensive as this is becoming more expensive. And this now has a discount of two, meaning this generator will only cost two money and we take that. But anytime any generator is taken from the cheap side, this goes all the way down to the bottom. If the cheap side becomes then empty. These slide across and again will bring in the next most expensive generator into the market. And in fact, this is one of the ways that drives the end of the game. If ever the top value, which is 15 value, of either type of generator comes in, we're then going to get into the end game phase, which we'll discuss a little later. Now, the next thing we're going to do is we're going to get more people into our condominium because currently we are full. You can never have more than five sp empty spaces available when you're adding to your condominium, but in this case, we haven't got any empty spaces, so we're happy to be able to buy in a new bit. There are loads of different types of additions you can put into your condominium. These, unlike the generators, are always all available to you. You're just looking at the price and how many points they score you, how much energy they cost, and how many spaces they've got. And in fact, one of the variants of the game is that when you turn them over, there's all different abilities on the other side as well. Now, in this case, we're going to keep it simple. We're just going to pay two money into the bank and we're going to take this condominium part and place it there. And also, seeing as we have four empty spaces, why not add four people? Now, we could add up to five, but at the end of taking this action, we have to feed all the people that we have. And just to save some food, we've got seven people here. We've got plenty, but we're just going to take four people, flip this over and pay the seven money, seven food rather, 
for our seven people back into the bank. Now I've been spending money there on the generator in the condo. How do I get more money? I simply take the subsidy action. When I choose this action, I see where the subsidy cube is. I check the number that's beneath it and I get that much money from the bank. So I'm gonna take 12 money now. And this moves one space to the right. And as the other players take turns taking subsidy, this will push up, push up, push up, and the subsidy will be worth more money as we go throughout the game and it will max out. The last thing we're gonna look at doing is buying an electricity generator. Now that works exactly the same as the food generator. We can choose from either side. Seeing as we just took money, we're feeling rather flush. So we will pay seven money and take this and put it into our condo. Then we can immediately move these people down because we're gonna generate electricity. And again, we look to our generators and we're powering for six at the moment. So we would take six energy from the supply and that will come into our own private reserves. So as I said, when you get to the end of having used all five action tiles, you get to flip them back over for free. If you want to do that while you still had a couple face up, you would simply pay one resource for each one that was face up. Now, when you do get to this stage and you're flipping up either by paying or for free, you look and check in how many loans you've taken out. If you've got any loans, you must pay one base resource or food or energy or money for each loan you have. Then you flip and then you get a chance to pay back five in any combination of those basic resources to get rid of that loan so the interest is not hanging around your neck. Now I briefly mentioned game end. When the 15 value generators come here, that's one way the end phase is generated. Or if any player has 25 people in their own condo, what happens is the tile that they specifically used at that stage to generate that, so let's say we did this and we got our 25th person, that tile would remain face down and all our other tiles would flip face up. Every other player's tiles would flip face up. They don't get to pay interest, you don't have to, but you don't get to pay off loans either at this stage. Then going around the table, we all get to use our face up actions one more time if we wish to. If we choose not to, and we still got one or two face up, we can end our game there and pass. They'll score us some points at the end of the game. But when we do do our final pass of the game, we must pay interest for those loans and then it's our final chance to pay them off or they're gonna cost us points at the end of the game. So what do we do at the end of the game and how are we gonna score our points? Because we haven't scored any yet. First thing we're gonna do is, we're gonna check how much electricity we generate and make sure we have enough power generated. Forget about these, they don't make a difference now, although we can score a handful of points at the end of the game. Do we generate enough power to power all the robots we've taken and all the condo bits we have? If we haven't, we're gonna to have to start getting rid of robots or eventually getting rid of condo bits in order that we have enough power to power what's remaining. Then we check and see if we've got living quarters for our people and we generate enough food for our people. If we do, we get to keep them, otherwise they again get kicked out. Then we're gonna start scoring some points. For every human you have living a life of leisure, that's gonna score you five points, which is why you want these robots to push the humans up and get them out of doing work. Any surplus generation you have is worth one point for each energy or food point. You're gonna score any points that you have on your condo bits, better ones than these, I would guess. Any loans that you did have remaining will cost you three points. Any tiles you haven't used, so if you pass for using them all, they're gonna score you three points. And I said you get a handful of points for these bits you have left over. For every 10 of them added together, you're gonna to score one point. And from that, whoever scored the most points and has the best condo is gonna be the winner of Futuropia. This has been a Game Pit Pit Stop. For more videos like this, check out the Game Pit YouTube channel. For more in-depth coverage of gaming, please check out the Game Pit podcast. Thank you.